Yarn with speckles looks awful. Good morning everyone. It, yeah, it's still morning. Um, I just thought I'd do something a bit different today. I'm sat in a bit of a different place and I thought I'd film a different kind of video. I've seen these floating around in various other sectors of YouTube and I thought that I would join in the fun. So I thought that uh, today I would react to your unpopular knitting slash crochet opinions. On Instagram last week, I asked people to share what their unpopular knitting slash crochet opinions were. Um, and yeah, these are things that, you know, these are thoughts that you have that maybe other people don't have. So yes, I screenshot all of the responses. They are gonna be kept anonymous because I think that's only fair. Um, and yeah, we're gonna go through them and I'm basically gonna to react to them. Just thought it'd be fun. So, pop the kettle on, grab yourself a cup of tea. I have a Yorkshire tea biscuit brew today, yum, uh, in my beautiful The Silver Spot Ceramics mug that I love and I'm obsessed with, and yeah, let's go. Someone said, I know some people hate it, but I love knitting ribbing. I do actually understand why some people hate it, but to me, purling is the same movement as knitting, so it's not that bad. Sure, it takes me a little bit longer to do because the knitting motion is a bit easier, but I have no problem knitting ribbing one by one. Ooh, once you get into the rhythm of it, ooh, it's beautiful, beautiful. Brioche is the work of the devil, hate it. I had a few people against a brioche, uh, so I thought it only fitting to wear my fluff nugget cardigan, which is knit entirely out of mohair and is um, completely brioche, brioche the whole thing. Oh. I love brioche. I think it looks beautiful. And once you get into the rhythm of it, much like with ribbing, it's actually really fun to knit. Um, yeah, it's not as difficult to knit as I thought it was going to be. And I mean, I've managed to knit a whole cardigan out of brioche. I even did German short rows in brioche. So yeah, this is a pattern by Becky Sorensen if you're interested in knitting one yourself. I never block a make. Hmm. That's an interesting one. I, I, I'm not, I mean, if you don't want to block your knits, that's fine. Um, my mum never has never really blocked a knit before, uh, but there are some distinct advantages to blocking your knitting, especially, like socks and stuff, sure, I don't block socks, but things like um, a lace shawl, oh, you need to block that to really open it up and make it look how it's meant to look. Um, I don't know, it just relaxes all the stitches and just makes everything just look... Ah, I don't know if that makes sense. Especially because I am not a machine when it comes to knitting, so. It's up to you. Do you block your knits? Let me know. Leave a comment down below. No swatch? You can't complain about a garment not working out. And then someone said, this is a self-confession or something like that. That's really funny. Uh, it cut off the end of the thing. I just went to adjust my glasses. They're not on my face. Um, yes. <laughs> I do agree with this opinion, and I think a lot of other people would as well, so maybe it's not that unpopular. But you can't complain about a pattern not working out if you haven't swatched. For those who don't know, I don't know why you wouldn't know, but maybe you don't, maybe you're new to knitting and crochet. Uh, for those that don't know, a swatch is where you knit or crochet a little square in the stitch pattern, or a tube, um, to work out what needle size you use. Uh, because sometimes the yarn that you're using and also just your general knitting tension differs fairly, I, f f fairly? a lot, um, vastly I think is what I wanted to say. Uh, I will use Becky as my example who designed this cardigan. Um, I used a different yarn to what she used to knit her fluff nugget and I actually ended up using the same needle size as hers. Uh, but I have knit a lot of Becky's patterns now and as a general rule of thumb I have to use a needle two sizes larger, smaller, larger. She's a looser knitter than I am, so yeah, I have to go up to at least two needle sizes to what she recommends in her patterns, just because her gauge is looser, because not everyone knits the same. So yeah, be sure to do a tension square or a gauge swatch. 
depending on what you call it. Someone has said that they don't like sparkly yarn. Outrage. It's not outrageous. Everyone has their own taste. I'm one that likes the sparkle, hence the sparkly buttons. But uh, yeah, I do know that there are a fair few people that don't like sparkly yarn. I don't know if I would ever wear a garment knit out of sparkly yarn. I mean, never say never, but I'm pretty sure I wouldn't. But I think they can be very beautiful for shawls. I love a sparkly sock. Um, but yeah, I. it's personal taste. It's entirely personal taste, which I guess is the point of an opinion. <laughs> Have you ever knit a garment out of sparkly yarn? Or what are your thoughts on it? I'm curious. I've dyed up some sweater quantities of sparkly yarn, so there must be people out there that, that want want them. This person has said brioche is knitting hell and ugly. I'm sorry. I can't hear you over how beautiful this cardigan is. I don't like mohair because it itches me and makes the sweater materials so expensive. And I've had a few other people say that they don't like mohair as well. Um, well, yes, if you have a sensitivity to mohair, it is going to itch you and uh, it's not going to be comfortable. My only gripe with mohair is that it, you know, gets up your nose sometimes and that can kind of be slightly annoying. But I love this. I love this. I was worried that it would be really annoying and itchy and just generally unwearable, but I wear it all the time, so it's not. Um, but I do completely agree that it does make sweaters expensive. I do completely agree with that. Um, and that does make some patterns quite inaccessible if it's designed to be knit with mohair. This wasn't designed to be knit out of mohair. I've just made myself an obnoxiously expensive cardigan. Um, and because it's my own hand dyed yarn, it saved me some pennies. But I will say that if you see a pattern that you like that is designed out of, for example, uh, a four ply sock weight yarn held together with mohair, very often that works out to about the same weight as a DK weight yarn. So um, if you really like the pattern but you don't want the fluff, just go for the DK, DK weight yarn instead if you want or, you know, see what other people have done if they've used a yarn substitution. Once again, make sure you swatch if you're changing the yarn because you want the jumper to fit after you've been working on it. Knitting socks is easy. Well, I think, in all fairness, anything is easy once you know how. Um, so just by saying that knitting socks is easy, once you know how to knit socks, yes, it is actually quite easy. And I always thought that knitting socks would be far more difficult than it was and was pleasantly surprised when I started to knit my first pair of socks, which I believe I used the My Favourite Socks pattern by Kristen of Vullenvine, um, who has now brought out some videos to further help you knit socks. There are so many great video tutorials out there and such, so yeah, if you find you don't get on with double pointed needles and like it's like you're tackling a spider that's, you know, trying to attack you back. Um, maybe try magic loop or another means and then you'll find, you'll, find your, you'll find your sock knitting groove. But once again, sock knitting's not for everyone. I just find it highly portable and therefore highly palatable. It's not an FO until it's blocked with all the ends woven in and snipped off. Ooh, I like this one. I mean, I, I do agree actually because I have an almost FO right here that I showed off on my last podcast that has all the ends still intact and still needs blocking. So in the podcast I described it as an almost finished object um, because it does need a block, which I will be sure to do this afternoon. She's been saying for the last fortnight. But yeah, I do, I do kind of agree to a certain extent, just because it's off the needles doesn't make it a finished object. It just means you're done with the knitting or crochet aspect of it. And then you still need to weave all the ends in. I'm going to insert my unpopular knitting opinion in here because no one else said it. I really like weaving in ends. I really like it unless it's on lace and then I don't like it because I can't work out how to do it. But I really don't have a problem sitting and weaving in ends. I know that a lot of people hate it because it's just an extra step they have to do. But I just, I enjoy it. I do it as I go. If I'm knitting for a bit and then I just think, oh, I'm just gonna stop and weave some ends in. 
I really enjoy it. I really like weaving in ends. And I don't know if that makes me strange, but if it does, I'm all right with it. Please let me know if you also like weaving in ends. We can be part of the I Love Weaving in Ends Club together. I don't know what dance this is. It's kind of like a excitable crab. I'm also going to interrupt this video with a cat watch. Cat watch, there's a cat, there it is. It originally ran across the garden, but I didn't have my camera with me. So here it is, here's the cat watch for those of you who missed it with the awkward singing. Back to the video. Yarn with speckles looks awful. This is heavily speckled. I don't think this looks awful. This is heavily speckled. I don't think this looks awful. Um, but I will say, if you are using speckled yarn and you're making yourself, or some, you're using multiple skeins of speckled yarn to knit anything, please make sure you're alternating skeins. Because one of the things that can make speckled yarn look awful is when it pulls. But once again, some people like that. Some people like pulling. I love speckles. You might be able to tell by how many speckled colourways I dye. A lot. I dye a lot of speckled colourways. I love them. I love them. I think they're beautiful and very wearable. Um, and they're so much fun to knit because if you're knitting for a while then all of a sudden you just get a fun little pop of colour. Ooh. Ooh, I love it. But once again, it's a personal taste. I've had two people say the double pointed needles only have one use and it's for an eye cord. Someone said I've come to loathe DPNs. Um, yeah, I used, I used, D I learned how to knit socks on DPNs. I thought it was the way to knit socks. And uh, yeah, I've got so many ladders up them and once I switched to Magic Loop, oh, it was so much easier, so much easier. So yeah, I am a, I'm a Magic Loop person, but it's always good to have DPNs because what if you need to do an eye cord? That's a very good point. The practical uses of acrylic are drastically underrated. How many people want to hand wash a blanket? It's a very good point. I feel like a lot of people do turn their nose up at acrylic, but I very much have a place for it. Um, if you're going to knit yourself a garment that you wear a lot and wash a lot, it's, I mean, you know, it might be worth knitting it out of acrylic. Not to mention, it is much more affordable for people um, to knit out of acrylic than it is to knit out of you know, hand-dyed pure wool. I'm all for a yarn snob, don't get me wrong. I myself am a yarn snob, but I'm also not against using acrylic because, like that person says, hand washing a blanket, no thanks. Also baby knits I feel like are generally quite good out of acrylic because they're gonna get washed a lot. She says after just showing a hand knit that's knit out of merino, but uh, or a baby knit, sorry, that's knit out of merino, but mm, we can't all be perfect. Uh, but I have some jumpers upstairs that my grandma knitted for my mum um, that I'm wearing still, that I'm, and that's, I don't know, 20, 30 years on, so maybe longer. I don't know, there's a there is a definite place for acrylic, and I don't believe that just because you're using it, it doesn't mean you're not valuing the time that you're putting into your knits or crochets. Ooh, fun fact. Someone said, more expensive yarn doesn't make it better. Acrylic is just as good as wool. It's all about how you use it. But, oh, I couldn't have said it better myself. Perfectly said. Perfectly said. Fades are mostly ugly. There was a huge fade, fade trend a few years ago, probably starting with the Find Your Fade and Andrea Mary, um, with that giant shawl. And uh, yeah, I mean, there could have been fades before that. I was just not as aware of them being a thing. Um, I have knit two so faded jumpers. I'm knitting my third, but that's not a fade. Um, and yeah, I have bought an advent calendar that is going to be a fade. I'm gonna knit myself a glorious cardigan out of it. So I understand why people don't like a fade, especially with the 
find your fade because it uses up some people would buy the full 100 gram skeins, seven full, full 100 gram skeins and use maybe 20 grams of it and that, you know, and then you've got all this yarn left over. So I understand that aspect. And once again, they're not the most financially accessible, but I loved them. As someone who has a color palette that's very one note um, or a couple of notes, but it means that all the single skein yarns that I bought kind of vaguely go together so I could make put a fade together out of them and it meant they actually got used instead of just sitting on my shelf looking beautiful. That's why I like a fade. They're really good for single skeins. I guess that's also the perk of a mild. It's okay to have more than one project on the go at a time and it's okay to not finish your project if it doesn't keep your attention. Ooh, I like that one. Just because you've cast something on doesn't mean you have to finish it. I knit the most of a body of a third Find Your Fade and I really did not like how the yarns were looking, but I was so far through it, I was just going to keep going anyway and it, I was just gonna suck it up and it was gonna be fine. But it got to a point where, no. And it's even to the point where it's okay to rip out a part of your knitting that you don't think looks good. For example, on this cardigan, I didn't quite get the row gauge of the pattern. Um, I got the stitch gauge, but I didn't quite get the row gauge. And this meant that I didn't have as many stitches going down the body as the pattern suggested. So I picked up the ribbing as the pattern suggested and knit it, and it was very tight and very short. Um, so I took it out, which is not something that I tend to do. I am very much a person of, this is finished, this is done, move on. Um, but yeah, I'm so glad I did because I've worn it so much since. But yeah, just because you've cast something on doesn't mean you can't undo it. Kind of like, just because you've knit something, if you don't wear it anymore, you can unravel it and use the yarn for something else, which I might have to do for a few of my knits. There's just a few projects I just don't wear because I feel like my aesthetic has changed. I don't know. Or I should de-stash them. And that is where I am going to leave it today. So thank you so much for watching. Please feel free to leave your unpopular knitting opinions in the description box, no, in the comments down below. Let me know if what yours are. Do you agree with the, any of these? Do you also hate the cardigan I'm wearing? the brioche mohair cardigan, which is apparently so controversial. Um, and yeah, just let me know. <laughs> if you'd like to follow me on social media, please feel free. Links, as always, can be found in the description box below, along with any other information that I think that you might need. Thank you to everyone for submitting your unpopular knitting opinions. I loved, I'm crochet. I loved reading through them. I found it really interesting um, and enlightening as a yarn dyer. Some of them slightly hurt me, but I didn't take it personally. You're all good. Um, and yeah, if you'd like to subscribe, I'm currently uploading three times a week, so I would love it if you were to join the party that is The Corner of Craft. Uh, we have a new podcast coming out this week as well, in which I talk about the various things that I have been knitting this week, or fortnight actually. And yeah. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. It really helps my channel out, so it would mean a lot if you were to do that. And with all that being said, thank you so, so much for watching, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye.